In the next 10 minutes, you'll find out how I created a game engine with Vulkan, so get your coffee ready, let's begin. I started university three years ago, back in 2022, studying computer games programming. During my second year, I was introduced to the OpenGL graphics API, and pretty soon I had a triangle on the screen which I was quite happy with. Hell yeah. Render a square, we can split it into two triangles like this use an IBO as two of the vertices are repeated and we don't want repeated data in the VBO. I immediately love shader programming and continue learning OpenGL from my degree as well as the OpenGL Super Bible. Now in my time at university I did three modules on OpenGL during my second and third years. This is the result of my first module and my introduction to OpenGL. We have three types of lighting. We have directional which is kind of like the sun. It has a direction and ambient factor. We have a point light which is a position and constants including colour. There are a lot of these in the scene and that's why you can see different colours. And finally we have the spotlight which is kind of like a torch. It has a direction and radii for the cutoff etc. And I can turn it on and off. In my second module I learnt about deferred rendering and how it compares to forward rendering which is what I've been using so far. I also created shadow mapping and I can change the directional lights in my I'm GUI window. I use tessellation shaders to change the test values of terrain depending on distance from the camera. I learned about different noise algorithms and used them as height maps. And then finally, I used physically based rendering for a model. Now, in my final OpenGL module, we were given a game and I learned how to optimize the renderer further. This included an entity component system, which meant instead of having game objects, we had entities which are just an ID. And then you attach different components such as transform, mesh renderer, and more to these entities. We use static variables to hold the current bound object to prevent rebinding them unnecessarily. We also use SIMD to perform the physics calculations. And finally, we monitored all these performance and changes with Tracy and found out how much of a difference each of these changes made. Now, after all of this, I found out that as good as OpenGL is, it was last updated in 2017 and seemingly replaced by Vulkan as the industry standard which is, funnily enough, maintained by the same people. So, for the following pain and suffering I endured, and will continue to endure by working with Vulcan, please leave a like and subscribe. Now, we've done OpenGL. Vulcan can't be that different, right? I was then shot 57 times. Now, the first thing I do before anything is create a GitHub repo for this engine to be stored. Then we had to find some resources to learn Vulcan. And after a lot of hard work, this is all the code required for, wait for it, a triangle. Remember how easy it was with OpenGL? Yeah, this ain't OpenGL. But now we do have a triangle, we want to load textures and models. For this, I use STB image and tiny object loader. Hippity hoppity, your code is my property. I didn't have much choice for models to load, so you know we went with a spinning iron golem. Like, he for real just came like that. I don't know why bro is spinning. My next task based on my Gantt chart was to create a particle effect using a compute shader. A lot of planning went into this as part of my project. I had a Gantt chart, critical evaluation and testing, research questions, project definitions, and a technical design document. Then I needed some abstraction into classes because this main.cpp file was looking horrendous. So yeah, after this we had classes for pretty much everything. If you know me quite well, you'll know that I don't comment anything, so this little step was a bit unusual for me, but it's documentation time. I've commented every line in my headers to the standard that will be picked up by Doxygen and generate documentation. This includes all classes as well as their functions and attributes. Apparently we needed some testing? I mean, who even does that? We just pushed to production, right? But this is the final project for my degree, so I have to pull out all the stops. Wow, would you look at that, it passed every test. I also created a physics engine from scratch, like with the time limitation I kept it fairly simple, but I mean we've got vectors, matrices, forces, and even simple equations as functions. Currently we have a renderer and physics engine, but the title of this video isn't creating a renderer, so let's make it more of a game engine. We steal dear I'm GUI again. For the UI, I wanted to keep it similar to what you'd expect from a huge game engine like Unity or Unreal, so you have a scene hierarchy, file manager, console, properties panel, and a viewport, which is also a text editor. To prove my game engine works, I need an example game. But with the deadline coming up, I need this done ASAP. 
It demonstrates the capabilities of the rock engine and its physics engine. We have OBB colliders, we have gravity, we have an event system. I mean, what is a game without user inputs? We implemented an ECS. By the way, I will link all the repos and resources I've used in the description if you want to try this yourself. Now, on this project, I received a 97%, which I'm obviously very happy about. And to be honest, it just made all the blood, sweat and tears I put into it completely worth it. It was also nominated by my university for the Tiger Graduate of the Year in the Computer Games Technology category. Thank you so much for watching. I will be back more often in the future, I swear, with new games and projects I want to work on. Thank you for your patience and support. I have created a Discord if you want to come and chat about game development or programming. I'll be there quite often while I'm working and you can just get more frequent updates.